Welcome to On The Daily, a podcast about finding the acoustic you. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary. I am a serial optimist and a champion of people who has long been on a search to truly see people and help you peel back all of your layers and become the most acoustic, authentic, and best version of yourself. I'm so glad you're here. Let's dive in. Okay, today's interview is one that I feel is so important, but also I am so grateful that I was able to get this interview because these are two women that I just look up to and respect so much. One of whom has literally been one of my mentors for the better part of the last decade. And their names are Jess Marino and Melanie Griffith. And they are part of my couples series for the month of February. Melanie is a senior master soul cycle instructor. She's also part of the executive leadership team. She's a mom. She's a two-time cancer survivor. She is a lover of all things and all people. And one of the most genuine souls I've ever met who can really bring out anything from you that she wants. And Jess is a finance genius. She's like Wall Street. She's a, like, they are both New Yorkers to their core. Jess is an elite triathlete and endurance athlete. Uh, she competed in France. She's unreal. And together they are building a life that is just so beautiful. And I cannot wait for you to hear this interview. But before we get into all of that, I have to tell you about my new favorite hat company. It is called Peter Grimm Hats. They are a small business, so they are up they are up and coming. I got the cutest like train conductor cap, one of those like one of those style of caps and it's the most amazing camel color. It's lightweight, it fits like a dream. It is so freaking cute. If you are a hat person, whether you are male, female, or anything in between, you have to check out Peter Grimm hats. And if you use my code, Danielle M for McCleary at checkout, you will get a discount. So enjoy that. Go check them out. If you are just joining on the daily, welcome to the family. Welcome to the community. I hope you will love what you hear. We are our second month into this podcast. So there are episodes to catch up on. If you go and you listen to last week's, you'll hear an amazing interview with my friends, Sandy and Wade. They are the hosts of the Getting Magnetic podcast. They have the most amazing love story, but they are also partners in business. They are partners in life. They are partners in joy and friendship in all of the areas. And their relationship is just so beautiful. And it's it was just a dream to talk to them about how their life has exponentially grown in value by being this amazing power couple that they are. So make sure that you check that out and let's get into this episode. I'm so excited for you to hear it. Hi guys. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you and hear your voices. Yeah, we're, we're excited to hang out. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the, the podcast. So I start every episode with a clearing. I used to work for Lululemon. And, um, one of the things that we always did on like every shift was like a clearing. So like whatever's on your mind that could like prevent you from being present. I know Mel, this is like totally your language. So <laughs> I'll start just to give you like an example, like today is one week since my dad passed. And that's been like infiltrating every thought I've had today, which is probably on purpose, but you know, it's like, I've been in waves of like joy and grief and joy and grief. And it's just been like a really rocky, rocky tide today. So that is what I want to get out into the world. <laughs> I am sending you a lot of love and I know very well the, the healing journey that you got to go on when you lose a parent. And as a parent, like I, you know, you, it's, it's just so sad. And I know how much love there was. So I love you. Um, I'm excited to spend time with you. Thanks for sharing that with us. What's your clearing? Uh, I always have a lot of things going on all the time. I'm sitting in a new job. It's a, it's a pandemic. My kids are each in a different state from me and from each other. 
and I, and I constantly have kind of a, a running under track of, of so much. And I don't say it in any way, but that's just the reality today in particular, it's a Saturday. It's my one day where I'm really entirely off. And Jessica and I went and cleared out a storage unit that has been untouched essentially for a couple of years. And it was sort of like symbolically like the last stuff that was in storage from a different time in my life. And also it uncovered a lot of cool things that were my mom's, that a couple of things that were my dad's and both of them are not alive and, and a bunch of cool stuff that was my kids. Oh, awesome. uh, From when they were really little. So Mm. yeah, now we have it back here and now we're going to go through it. So that was today. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. What about you, Jess? Yeah. I'm kind of riding that train of the, I feel, I feel very proud of us that we cleaned out that storage and it is very, you know, this whole process to, to where we sit right now and, you know, sharing a home together and, and what that meant has been a really cool journey. And so it's, it's, I feel pretty happy and just grateful to, to be where we are and that we took that step today and it was a real pain in the ass. The first time we went in there, I almost like cried from like being overwhelmed. <laughs> and so, and then we did it and, and we have to go through it, but um, it, it is like, it's been like a literal clearing. So that's really, and then I'm going to add in the whole clearing pile that like, I don't love to hear myself. And so it makes me nervous. I'm fine when, when I'm in it and then afterwards. So I'm just going to toss that in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Toss all of those. Yeah. Like you have to toss those in the bucket because otherwise you just like have like awkward energy the whole time. So you have to like, you have to be like, Bleh. oh my gosh. Well, okay. I feel much better now that we got that out of the way. So I want to tell you both. So February is I'm featuring like couples that I find are living like really authentic, what I call acoustic lives. And you guys obviously were one of the couples that I picked and I know Mel pretty well, right? Like I, I've known you a really long time and I've always looked up to you as like mama Mel, like one of the greatest mentors I've ever had, but like also just, you know, mom to mom, friend to friend, woman to woman. Right. And I think our personal stories through like love have been similar. So I would love to first have you guys each like individually just share a little bit of your story, like who you are, where you come from, what titles you identify with, you know, like mom, badass, like whatever it is. And then just kind of give us like who you guys are. And Jess, you're going to have to talk and hear yourself. So let's just dive right into that deep end. Let's go. Um, My story is I am from a small town in Ohio. Um, Northeastern Ohio. It's called Poland, Ohio. Uh, I grew up there my whole life and had a pretty simple, come from a, like a conservative Catholic Italian family, Ohio, small town kind of, you know, high school football games. I was an athlete. I played soccer. Uh, I was a kid gymnast, always sports, always in my life. I was always very serious um, in that way. So I moved away from home at eight or nine years old to try to, I really was like, I'm going to be in the Olympics. Um, And I believed it and I tried. And then I was like, I am not happy anymore. I'm going to be a kid. And so I just then went on, I played soccer in high school and track and that kind of a thing. And then, then I went to school in Richmond, Virginia, and I majored in business because I don't know. That seems like, well, I don't know, what, what, what does one do? <laughs> when they oh my just- gosh. My dad did the same thing when I went to college. He was like, you should do business. I was like, I have no interest in business. I yeah. dance. And he goes, business. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, seems, seems logical. Like, yeah. let's do that. Uh, cool. And <laughs> so I did that. I played soccer in college. Uh, I went to University of Richmond, as I said. I was a soror- I was a sorority girl. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, oh yeah. <laughs> and then which sorority? I was a Kappa Kappa Gamma. I was not in a sorority, but I like to hear people tell me when what sorority they are in because somebody's going to hear this and be like Kappa Kappa Gamma and like be really yeah, yeah. excited yeah. about it. 
welcome sister <laughs> we're yeah they're out there it's good <laughs> and yeah and then I graduated college and came to came to New York because business because that's what I'm going to do <laughs> and they were like right so you got to find a job and okay what what jobs are there <laughs> and so like one of my roommates was very diligent and she's incredibly intelligent and she went through the interview process before me and it's like finance, sales and trading, Wall Street. Tell me more. I was like, tell me more about that. Not aggressive, think on your feet, be able to be kind of part of the boys club. And I was like, got it, got it, got it. Okay. I think I should, I think I should interview for that. I feel like I could do that. And that was kind of, it was like really, that was it. And so I interviewed for a, a job on Wall Street as an intern. And I knew nothing and that they, like ignorance was bliss and they gave me a job and it was kind of history from there. And so I work in finance. I still do sports. I'm like, and I'm, I now consider myself an elite endurance athlete and I do Ironman. I really only do half Ironman now. Ironmans are behind me and my body. And I'm even taking a little break from racing, which is pretty cool. I mean, you're super modest. Like I always think of you as like, you're literally one of the best triathletes, I think in women's like triathletes right now. Like that's the way that I see you. I'm like, you went to <laughs> France, like <laughs> France, bitch, France. Like, <laughs> oh, I miss France. Yeah. Yeah. I have a like competitive spirit in me and I very much, whether it's like a false sense or not, I'm, I believe that I'm like I can do great things. And so I keep just trying. I just keep trying the best I can. Uh, and I love it. I really, really, really love it. And so as long as I love it, I'm going to keep doing it. And it, it keeps shifting, which Melanie really helps me. We're, we're working through keeping a healthy balance with that and never doing because I feel like I must and doing because I love. Yeah. And that's something Mel's really good at. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So who are you, Mama Mel? Who are you right now? I mean, whew, you know, there's a lot of things. My story has so many chapters. Uh, right now, I am really in a pretty vibrant chapter of like, really, who am I again? Standing on my feet, not having to identify too much with, you know, people used to ask me, how are you? And I would answer by saying how my kids were. <laughs> I went through that period. Well, Emma's doing this and, and different things like that. Um, so right now I'm, I'm just kind of figuring out like, who am I as I shift from the full caregiver of mother to being mama a little more from afar as my kids are growing up. I am in a really exciting new role in my career. I am cancer free um, which is, you know, I've heard that before and, you know, now I'm hearing it again at a pivotal time where now they shift from like, okay, now, okay, now I'll see you again in six months. There's been so much learning about my genetics, about cancer in my family. And, you know, so I'm in a new chapter there also of, changing the story from fighting cancer to preventing cancer for my extended family through a genetic counseling and preventative approach. Um, we found out some stuff this year about it on my father's side of the family. So it's, yeah, I'm all of those things. Like when I hear Jessica's story, I came from Western Massachusetts. My father was a musician. I grew up in this kind of intellectual New England. New Yorkers would come in to visit for the arts in the summer and to ski in the winter. Um, really cute little town called Lenox, Massachusetts. And I came to New York City to go to college in 1987. And this is where I've been ever since. You are, you guys are both such New Yorkers. Like I will never, I have to tell this story. So I will never forget. It was like my first time meeting Mel. <laughs> I like walk into soul cycle training and she's like, we're going to get real. And I was like, oh yeah, I could do that. And I realized within like two minutes that like 
her version of real and my version of real were like yeah. completely different. <laughs> and I was like going through a divorce when I first met you. Like I was all sorts of messed up, just like in and out of just like wondering who I am and like trying to find myself. But I just remember like meeting Mel and being like, oh, wow. A, she is a New Yorker. B, <laughs> I'm going to have to, I can't hide from her. Like, this is going to be the first time in my life. Like I can't hide. And it's been a journey ever since. Um, and then when I finally met Jess, I was like, oh, if they're not a couple, they're going to be a B also very New York, like, like very New York. I love that. Yes, she is. <laughs> Well, and I'm like very LA. So it's like, there's just, a, exactly. I mean, I remember when I finished training, I think it might've been you or Janet that was like, you should stay in New York. I was like, Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't quite realize you would have, you, it, it would have also been an interesting and awesome path for you to stay in New York, Dania. Totally. But I do. It would have been. It would have, but I do see that LA is, is in your blood. Yeah. Now I'm like considering moving to Texas. So go figure. <laughs> oh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you guys are amazing. I want to know, you guys can give me your own definition of this. What does it mean to live acoustically? And this can be individually, this can be as a couple, you can kind of like intertwine how you guys met into there, like whatever you feel on your heart to share about living acoustically. I would love to know, you know, when I think of acoustically, the idea of acoustics and living acoustically, it's, you just break it down to like the simplest line, you know, it's not the other stuff. And like the other stuff is awesome and it's rich and it's fun. And there's a lot of stuff, the simplest line when you live acoustic, you know, that's what it means to live acoustically to me, to just be very clear. We talk about it in our relationship and when we talk to other people about our relationship, the idea of love is love without any sort of label. And so our story has gone through all kinds of different labels and it, it just started, it actually started as just mutual acquaintance that we met at SoulCycle mm -hmm. because Jessica knew somebody that rode with me and Jessica was just starting to train for an Ironman because she had decided randomly to race an Ironman without owning a bike or really knowing very well how to swim. As you do. Yeah, as one does. <laughs> uh, and so I met her in Union Square at Soul Cycle through some friends. She was in class a lot. I liked her vibe. She liked mine. We became friends and we became in a group of friends. And then over the years, we became really close friends and she kind of joined my family in that way during a time when my mother was at the end of her life and dying. And Jessica at the time, it was now, I would think that was 2012, stayed with my kids so I could be at the hospital. Right. And it was so acoustic. It was pure. It was pure friendship. It was pure love. It was pure. Like there was no, like so many people, you say that like, if they're not a couple, they will be. I mean, the amount of times that people just, and we would get, I, I would get offended, frankly. Uh, oh, same. Yeah. yeah. People used to ask the same thing of Breezy and I, like, you guys are together, right? We'd be like, no, we're just like, she's like my best friend. Like I yeah. just, I love her. Like, yeah. And like, yeah, it, it, it really was that, that simple. And, you know, I don't even think of those as like, I told you so's. I think of those as for me now and to like reflect back on really that acoustic, simple truth that there was a connection that we had that was really powerful and, and how lucky we are to have been, to me, brave enough to be vulnerable enough yeah. to explore the possibility that maybe this was actually the love story that was going to carry each of us forward into the next, you know, chapters of our life. And, and that's how it turned out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took a lot of bravery and it took a lot of work, each of us on ourselves on same with me. I was, had gone through a separation and dragged out in a difficult way because we had 
my ex-husband and I had made the choice to continue living in the same (laughs) apartment, even though we weren't together. Mm -hmm. And under the guise of it'll be easier for the kids, but I think also just born out of just fear and not knowing how to, how to break up and divorce is hard. And, and I certainly did not get married to imagine that and neither did he. And there was still so much connection and love and love for our kids. So there were some really, really hard years. Yeah. Just individually, yeah. you know. And it, it, yeah. it just to like, to piggyback, like it, it is, you know, I'm just contemplating the idea of acoustic. It is brave to, to do anything acoustically. There is nothing else to contribute to the sound of what is going on. And that can be scary because what if you mess up or everybody can hear you. And so for, for me on my, you know, I, I said, I come from a conservative Italian Catholic family. Um, when we realized what, you know, was made, what was rooted in such deep friendship and love was, was maybe love. And, you know, we were, trying to explore that I when I shared with my parents it did not go well and so to live acoustically is to like be brave and to still speak into the microphone even though like maybe it's you know there's there's bumps um Mm -hmm. and each of us really had to do that to get to where we are and so so grateful to have made that choice (laughs) the scary choices Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that a little bit. Cause I mean, I relate to this so much and I know like Mel, you and I have had conversations about this. Like it's literally the same thing. Like I was going through, I went through a breakup and it was like, we stayed living together for a while and for our son and never ever imagined like that would be where it went. I think And you can like, tell me if this is something that resonates with you. I think like looking back at that time and trying to remain as authentic as possible, because for me, that's always a goal of mine to never hide from people. But I think, especially when you're in like a public space and, you know, being that like, whether it's a, you're a soul cycle instructor, you have a good Instagram following, like you're present on whatever, like if you're a present person, all of a sudden, everything you go through like has to you have to go through it publicly. And there's so many assumptions that for me got so deep inside that I was like, is that true? Like, am I, Ooh, uh, am I that way? And it was navigating through all of that to just be like eye to eye with breeze and be like, what are like, what do we want? What are we doing? What is this for us? I feel like watching you guys go through what you went through and just like, and it was interesting because from my perspective, like I kind of knew a little bit of insider scoop, but I also knew what that was. And I, I very much like just pulled back and just kind of said, you know what, like whatever is going on there, they're going through a lot and it'll be really beautiful to see where it comes out on the other side. But I would love to know, like, what, like, yeah, like what are some of those, those roadblocks and stuff, you know, and those layers that you had to kind of get through to get to where you guys are now. And it's like, so beautiful to see you guys like sitting on your own couch. Like for those of you listening, I'm watching them right now. And they're like on their own couch. They have this awesome artwork behind them. Like you guys just look so happy. And I know that it, it was a road to get there, you know? Oh, thanks, Danielle. Well, first of all, I think that's a really important point that you made that you knew there was stuff going on and you also gave space to let us figure it out. And and I think that is, it's a generous way to approach friendships and life. And I appreciate it so much. So I just wanted to call that out, say thank you. Of course. For us at the time, you know, we knew that if we made the choice to explore our relationship, our love relationship, and really like claim it and go for it, number one, we had to be really clear with each other about what that meant. Uh, And so we started there. And 
And then what was important was our families, my kids particularly. So that just had to evolve naturally. My kids were, you know, it's been a couple of years now. My kid, they were all teenagers at the time. And so we just went and took our time of explaining it, of just. There was no, there was no rush or no. urgency in any way once we understood that we were going to explore our relationship and always it was that the kids were processing their parents getting divorced and that is hard and that is sad and it and it's they're still working through that I'm sure and so there was you know there was really like thoughtful like you know of the living situation or of time, who was where, like making sure that like they, they, like they were the first, they were the first priority. Um, and that had to be, that had to be the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, each one of them individually, you know, my kids are, my kids are New Yorkers, you know, even though none of them are in New York, New York right now, my kids are, open-minded and sophisticated and down to earth. And they have known Jessica as like part of our group crew, you know, part of our family. I was, you know, I'm a welcoming kind of social being in life. And so they loved her and they have always loved her, but it was in a different capacity. And so that part individually her relationship with each one of my kids is something that they, it's great. They have one and they go through different periods and adjustments and they're working through it and, and it's going to be a work forever, but rooted at the foundation of all of this is just a tremendous amount of love. As we were exploring it, we were, you know, my kid's dad was all always very aware and he has a new relationship and you know it's an interesting thing for us because neither one of us felt like we had some big coming out story <laughs> same <laughs> and so definitely you know different people in my family or my extended family where i had to say like okay let me tell you what's going on let me catch up with you would ask like oh was this something you were always hiding or, you know, and I said, no, it's, it's really not. It's really just as simple as two beings who just like are in love and have made a choice to partner up and do life together and support each other. And I, I like, I didn't <laughs> know, like the, the, the term love is love. Like you can, it's easy to get on board with that because it's super straightforward and you're like, yeah, totally. And until you, until I guess it was tested for me in a way, like it's truly how I see and believe because it happened to me. And like, I would have for the end of time, till the end of time in my mind still filed it as like a label in sexuality. And now I just, to me, you just love another being and whatever that may look like is what it looks like for you. and. I think that's something totally. that my family has a hard time understanding that's rooted in these like kind of religious, very Catholic, really, really strict Catholic beliefs. Of that course. That's confusing or that that doesn't make sense. And so it's, you know, but that is really, really how I, how I feel without having to overanalyze it. Like, I'm just like that. It's just what I feel in my heart. Totally. I remember when Breeze and I finally told everybody, like finally started to have conversations and be like, yeah, so like we're together. People would say, oh, like, you know, did you congratulate, like you came out, congratulations. And I'd be like, no, actually that's, that's not the story. I, I wish it was, it actually probably would have made everything a lot easier, but actually it's just that I fell in love with this person who also happens to be a woman. And 
that is it. And I don't know how to explain that any other way, but then I think part of for at least Breeze and I part of like, cause she's, I mean, she's been dating women since probably, I mean, she probably dated her first woman when she was like in high school or just shortly thereafter. And, you know, she had her ups and downs with her family, my family, like I literally just like went to my dad. I was like, so Breezy and I are dating. And he's like, great. We love her. I was like, awesome. And my mom was like, okay, yeah. Um, like I, what do we tell our family? And I was like, I don't know, tell them whatever you want. Tell them that the world has bigger problems than girls who kiss other girls. And we're just going to move right past it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, sorry, sorry if that isn't the answer you wanted, but it was just so funny. Cause everybody wants to always like attach, like, Oh, so they're together now. So they are X. And it's like, well, yeah, exactly. no, I mean, who's to say, like, I couldn't fall in love with a guy. Like, it's just, it's so crazy. And it really, I resonate with that so much because it is like, there's no labels involved. It's just, I love this person with every part of my soul. And she also is a woman. Yeah, it really, it just really is that simple. Uh, I was talking to my daughter, Emma, about it a few weeks ago. She said just the, how it's just so, it's just nor, how to normalize that as a concept, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice? It was like, doesn't have to be awkward. doesn't have to be a big deal. And, you know, here's the thing for me, this is what I want to say. Jessica's family, yes, it has been a challenge, but we have made so much progress. And a lot of that has to do, again, with if you look at the situation acoustically, if you break it down to the simple, Jessica will say it all the time, like, this is my family. I love them. And of course, there are certain cousins and people who were very welcoming, right? Um, but we had her mom and dad over, they slept in our apartment. They they were actually sitting on a day bed. This is, we call it the ladies room because of the art on the wall, but they slept in this bed in our apartment, brought us a housewarming gift. We had an, it was one of my favorite days around Christmas that they came and we were here and we had such an awesome time. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I think part of that, you guys, I, I really do believe it's because like you guys, you live so acoustically and you really are like, two authentic, genuine human beings. And I, I really do believe like love is the universal language. Like it really is. And if it's like, I mean, Breezy's family kind of had like their, their feelings about her dating women, but it's like, when you see people that just love each other and like, there's no, there's, there's no negativity there. It's love and it's positive and it's light. Who can, what do you say to that? You, there's nothing to be said except for like, I want to, I want to feel that. I want to be a part of that. You know, I promise if you hang out with us, you're like, oh, that makes all the sense in the world. hundred <laughs> percent. Because look how nice they are to each other. <laughs> look how much fun they have. <laughs> look how, you know, they support each other, whatever it is in any given situation, heavy or light, you know? And so that feels, that just feels like home. That feels, yeah. that feels simple, whatever, whatever we're doing. Yeah. So right now in this moment on, what is it? January 23rd, 353 Pacific. What are you guys most proud of? Can be a together. It can be individually. What are you most proud of right now? (laughs) I, I collectively feel proud of us as individuals and how it's just so clear to me how important it has been and and will be forever to you have to do you and you have to do the work. And I know that I've done the work and I know that Melanie has done the work and I know that I'm continuing to do the work. And I know that Melanie is continuing to do the work and together, like we we, will only ever find common grounds and understanding and understand how I could be better to, um, you know, not whatever, get triggered the next time or whatever it is. And we're just constantly working. And I feel, I feel super proud of myself and I feel super proud of us. And I feel super proud of Melanie because it's hard. It's hard to face yourself. It's hard to face your shortcomings or the things that are difficult. But if you do, it just, it, it just opens doors to, to just a deeper sense of self and a deeper, like, I think that we have been able to find a really deep connection with each other because 
we're able to do that with our own selves. And so it just keeps, it just keeps, you can keep going in the layers and it, it's truly, it's definitely my proudest thing. So what are you, what are you most proud of? This has been, it's almost exactly one year since I had major surgery. Um, and so it is a pretty reflective time for me to go circle back. I am so proud this year of the literal and figurative, like releasing of a lot of things that were toxic energetically in the, it literally in my body with the cancer, but I had been trying to hold myself together as this mama warrior for everybody else and kind of stuff down like some grief and some feelings and some fears. And I just kept, I'm like a, I'm like a survivor and I kept surviving, 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 fighting, fighting, going, going, going. And this year I really did the work. And the way that I think of it is, you know, I was strong enough to be really vulnerable yeah, uh, for myself and, and really for my, my whole, like we like to call modern family. And it's, I'm just in the same way that Jessica said, I'm proud of myself for going as deep as I've ever gone and being as willing to learn about myself and how I want to be and how I want to live and, and then share it with my kids, with my family, with the people in my life. Yeah. In a way where I, I'm not bearing a burden. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm just living, I'm just living and I want to talk to you. I want to know what's going on with you, but I don't have to constantly, I can unhook a little from the responsibility of how is this kid? How, how are the kids? How are, how is every single individual that means something to me? And I have this world and life, you know, you got to unhook a little and trust everybody. Right. I've been thinking about this, like this year, this idea of lead by listening, lead by listening. And I'm kind of the kind of learner that has to get it a little bit wrong sometimes to then go like, ouch, <laughs> oops, mm -hmm. let me rethink that and then go. And so I've had a couple of those, but when you're willing to go deep and vulnerable, you look at little missteps and you can take the, the shame out, the insecurity out, the blame out, right? And you can just look at it and then repattern your thought to support you to like, actually just like, okay, now I'm just going to move forward from there. Yeah. I mean, Mel, it's been really awesome, actually, like a little, a little love to both of you, Mel, it's been really awesome to watch you over the last couple of years, like do exactly that, because I think you used to be the type, at least knowing you the way that I've known you, like you used to take on everyone else's feelings and everyone else's drama and everyone else's yeah. bullshit, quite frankly. <laughs> Like you used to just take it on and like, as if it was yours and you used to like, but it used, it seemed like it just added to your armor. Right. And so it's been a really cool thing to watch you like take that armor off and still be like the same, like loving, receptive, kind, light human that you've always been without like needing to attach to every single person's everything all the time. So that's, I, you, you are proud of that, but it's like, I, I've seen that from the outside also. And Jess, it's it, when you were talking about, you know, going through with the kids and stuff and, you know, Breeze and I always, I always check in with Breeze because like being the mom who has to like, accept that you're not going to be with your son's dad anymore. And like what that's going to do to your kids. Like for me, it was like, especially with such a young kid, that was, it was a lot of, um, like a little bit of shaming, a little bit of, I'm going to mess everything up. Like, am I doing the right thing? But, and that's like a whole thing moms go through, but like being a stepmom, like that's like, Ooh, that is another level. And it's been <laughs> Breeze and I always like, we look at you, Jess, and like, you're so good at it. Like you can just tell, like 
you let the kids lead by like how they're feeling. And it's awesome. I mean, especially being in that situation with breeze and like, she's literally like raising a four-year-old, you know, and you know, his uh, Owen's dad, like we get along great. Like you and you and your ex-husband get along great now. And you guys hang out and like, can be like good for the kids. And like, we have the same situation, but it's taken a lot to get there. And I commend you both on going through what you've gone through so genuinely, but also, also like going through it and like doing the work and showing up because it shows, it shows today, you know? Thanks. Jessica is incredible at trying to right, find the right balance of when to lean in and when to lean out. And, and it really is about letting them lead, but also being very clear that you come from a place of love and support. And totally. there's been different ways that she has gotten that message through to each kid. She and Emma can talk. You know, sometimes she needs, she'll write things. She'll write a letter. She's written letters to Jude. She's, you know, had different back and forth with Aiden in different ways and different moments. Sometimes I find out what my son is doing because he Snapchatted Jessica. <laughs> Love that. I very much am aware of that. I'm not aware of what they're going through and how it's like emotional. <laughs> it is. It is. Ooh, just of like, I appreciate that they accept me and they accept that their mom and I are together and that can't be easy. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not. And so I, that's always, that is always on my mind. And so it's just, uh, it's, I am always just trying to, I want to be an important part of their lives and I don't want to be their mom. I'm not their mom. And we're in this stance of kind of trying to really find what that, what, what that really feels like for everybody and what is the authentic. And I think we're, we're on that path of really kind of getting down to that with, with each other. And, and that's it. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's, I can say for, I have a step mom and I have a stepdad. And my stepdad I've had since I was six. My mom and him got married when I was really young. My parents have been divorced since I was like two. Yes. So my mom got remarried and my stepdad, Rich is like, I was attached to the hip to him when I was younger. And like, that did not take the place of my dad. Like anybody who knows me knows that my dad is my soulmate, like best friend, but there's like another level. It's like more people to love you, more people to guide you, more people to help shape you. Right. And my stepmom actually didn't even come into my life until 2007. Mm. And going through what we're all going through with my dad's passing right now is actually, I'm so glad that she did the same thing with us. Cause I was about 18, 19. No, I was like 20. I was like 20 when my dad and my stepmom got together. And so when you say learning when to lead in, learning when to, you know, just let them know you come from a place of love. I'm so grateful for her that she did that for me because now at 33, I am going through the loss of somebody that we both loved very deeply together. And I'm so, so grateful for her. So I can tell you from like a daughter that kind of had a step parent come into my life around the same age as Emma and Jude and Aiden, like it is so special. And it's, I'm so excited to see like five years from now, what it looks like, you know? So I have one question left and then we're going to play a game before I let you go. And my last question for you both is, and you're going to love this one. <laughs> it's five years from now. Okay. So it is 2026. Woo. It is January 23rd. What does life look like? If you had a vision for it, like if you could, you know, we all think about what's our life going to look like. What's life look like for you both? Huh? I don't play this game often. Me either. So I'm going to answer this in the way that I kind of how I think about life. I see us just <laughs> sitting right here, you know? I don't want for anything more. I don't, you know, I I I am so happy with where we are right here. Yeah. I can see that. I can see you're really happy and isn't that like how beautiful it's like we grow up and we are so 
oh, and five years from now, like I'm going to yeah. be doing this and this and this, and my yeah. life's going to look like this. But like to be able to say, you know, in five years, sure, I'd like to have a little bit more money. I'd like to be a little bit more like secure. Maybe a house somewhere else would be cool, but big thing. Like those are like out, those are like surface level things, but like at the core, this is fine. We moved into this beautiful apartment uh, down in the West Village. And I have, I've lived down in the West Village for a while. And it initially, we were on a path of Jude was home and he was grad. He was not graduating for another year in school, and it made sense. And and his dad was ten blocks away on the Upper West Side, and so it made sense. Separate homes, that Melanie would be uptown. Just it was all very thoughtfully. You know, that's that's kind of just how we went about it. And then the pandemic hit, and everything everything changed, and it led us to this home that we're in now. And it's like. I I don't need or want anything. We we have been able to put together this home and nest in a way that feels I feel we feel so proud of this space and like it's silly but it's important. Um mm-hmm. and yeah, I don't I I mean it's funny that Jessica answered that with a whole preamble about not liking to answer that question and then how she said it because I for sure would answer the exact same way I was thinking. I was like well, five years from now, we have a three-year lease. Like, I hope we get another one because <laughs> I just want to stay right here. And so I really was thinking like, well, we'll definitely be living right here. Um, here's what I see. We're definitely both going to be engaged in our career in a way that feels great because that's an interesting and fun focus for each one of us now in our own ways. I think we're going to hopefully travel again. We started Mm. trying to find an alternative to television and we were thinking, what else can we do? And we decided to start taking Spanish lessons. We've only had two lessons and we're, we we have this vision that we're going to learn Spanish well enough so that in a year from now, when we travel to Mexico, we can have a conversation and come in with a little more grace and be able to speak (laughs) the language. And so... (laughs) that's what we're doing. And, you know, yeah, it's not, we're, we're content, we're happy, but we're also excited about all the different opportunities. Who knows? Are we going to go and live in LA one year for a month? I don't know, maybe so that just hopefully, right. Like (laughs) we still have adventure in our lives, but we also have a really solid home base that is bright and colorful and so beautifully blended us. True. Uh, Yeah. And we have a little outdoor space. Like we are stoked and grateful every single time we're in our apartment. (laughs) Well, you, and you've worked for it. I mean, like you've like worked for it in every sense of the word, right? (laughs) Yes. All capital letters, all the way, yes. All the like <laughs> bright, shiny emojis around that, you know? We feel just like we're in the right place at the right time. And yep. we're so happy about it. <laughs> uh, I Even love you though, guys so much. You know, I I really I'm not I, I immediately want to say like I acknowledge <laughs> that there's a lot of hurt and hard stuff in, in the world, both close and far from home. And yet I do believe there is still room for joy and happiness and love and laughter, yeah. even though there is also, you know, and each one of us have our own, 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 own things that we're, that we're in this dance of life with, you know? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think if we don't have gratitude and we don't have joy, then how can we have the other things? Right. Like I think about this, like, obviously a lot of what I'm thinking about right now is like my dad, but it's like, I know that the joy and the light and like the, he could feel like shit and he still made sure that everybody around him was feeling joy. 
like he still persevered through some of like some really like bad health issues. Like he persevered for so long. And it's like, I know that all of those characteristics live in me. And even though right now in this particular moment, like I'm in an an immense amount of grief, I know that those qualities will be what gets me through this. So those are worth celebrating, you know? Yeah. Mm, Yeah. And, and grief is a, it's a sneaky thing and it, you can't just check off like, okay, I did the grief box, you know, totally. Uh, it's, it's got blurred edges and it'll come and go. And, you know, there's, there's no real timeline. I think, you know, this year I'll say a year ago when I was in the hospital after the surgery and Jessica that was there the entire time. And, somehow it worked. We made it work even from day one where they said like, no, you can't have anybody lie in the bed with you. Um, she literally laid in the bed with me the entire time. And it was one of the most incredible weeks of my life, you know, in a weird way, it was this beautiful, we kind of had this like love story of during this like really profoundly vulnerable thing where I just was like cut open and learning, you know, figuring out how to kind of get back on my feet with the most incredible caregivers and nurses. And we brought so much color and fun and on the board in the room and just really made incredible lasting friendships with people we made that met that week. So um, this is, you know, we're now like ride or die right here. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you're a two-time cancer survivor. That's, yeah. that's pretty amazing. That's a testament to who you are, like who both of you are, honestly, because it's not just like what we go through. It's like, how are the people around us like help us get through it? And it's like, that's a testament to both of you. I remember when I saw you like post that you, like they found cancer again. I was reading all the comments of people being like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I was, the oh, the first thing I thought was like, oh no, she does not need your sympathy. This woman is going to be fine. She is going to take cancer and she's going to drop kick it like third period French, just you wait. And like, here we are a year later, you know, it's like. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, thanks for yeah. letting me in that light. Well, okay. I have a game. Are you ready? It's a, it's an on the spot game. You're going to love this. So we have one minute and I don't have a timer in front of me right now. So I actually have no idea if it's going to actually be a minute, but I'm going to ask you rapid fire questions and they are simple answers. The first thing that comes to mind, you can both answer. One of you can answer. It doesn't really matter. You can have different answers, but this is just like hot seat. You ready? Yes. Okay. We'll start with some easy ones and then we'll go a little bit deeper. Okay. One minute. Here we go. Tequila or vodka? Vodka. Vodka. Sweatpants or jeans? Sweatpants. A night in or a tropical vacation? Tropical vacation. Um, Both. (laughs) You're going on a deserted island. You can take three things with you. What are they? My blankie. (laughs) My glasses. Your glasses for sure. Picture of my kids and like an awesome sarong. Bathing suit phone charger. <laughs> so you're going to a deserted island and, and you're not bringing each other. So, okay, great. We're both answering. That's yeah, that you're one. both going, you're both going to the same deserted island. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, what's a dream in your life that you've let go of? Going to the Olympics. <laughs> hmm. Um, I don't, I don't, I have not let go of any of my dreams. Boom. <laughs> okay, last one. Are you missing anyone right now? And do you think they're missing you too? Listen, I miss my kids a lot. And I think they m- miss me too in different ways at different times. Same. My family, my sister and brother in law, and my nieces I mean, like they're in Rhode Island and it's so close, but we have not been able to go and see them because of COVID. And same thing with my parents. I I miss my, I miss my family. Yeah. Listen, I adore you both. Thank you for sharing your heart so openly and vulnerably. I wouldn't have expected anything less, but this has just been such a dream to just chat with you guys and A, see your faces, get to, get to talk to you again. 
And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, those two are just the most amazing humans. I feel like I got to watch it all happening, their relationship, their love story unfolding. I got to watch it all happening from afar, but also as an insider and everything they said is just so honest and so raw. And I really, 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 really hope you loved it. It was brought to you by Organifi, which is an organic superfood company. They have a whole line of products, all completely vegan, all completely superfood based. The two products that I am absolutely obsessed with is their red drink and their gold drink. Their red drink is all of the reds. So you're, you have your raspberries, strawberries, cranberries, you have cherries, lemons, and then there's also like mushrooms and rhodiola and all the things that are really, really good in terms of like red fruits and vegetables. So I'm really loving that. I like mix it up and I drink it cold. And then I'm also completely obsessed with their nighttime gold drink. It's turmeric, it's cinnamon, and it's calming and it's soothing and it tastes amazing in a cup of tea. And I'm obsessed. If you want to try it, head on over to OrganifiShop.com. Use my code on the daily at checkout and you'll get a little discount. Yeah. Enjoy it. Listen, we have been having so much fun with this podcast. I cannot believe that I get to just talk to amazing people all the time. It's such a dream. This has been such a goal of mine for so long. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you are just joining us, like I said, go back and listen to other episodes. They're not in any order. So you can always just pick one that resonates with you and dive into it. If you are loving what you are hearing, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe, give us a rating. We love a five star. Give us a review. Tell us that you love it. Tell us why you love it. Tell us what you want to hear more of. If you want to connect with me, find me at Danielle underscore on the daily. That's my personal Instagram and TikTok, or you can find the podcast at on the daily pod slide into our DMS. Tell us what you want more of. If you have a guest that you want to hear from, if you are a guest that we should hear from any advice, any feedback, we love it all. And at the end of the day, we would just love to hear from you. I am so excited for next week's episode, my friend Kyle will be on the show and he will be telling all about the ups and downs of relationships, both in and out of this like pandemic time that we are in. And I just cannot wait for you to hear it. So tune in next week and we'll see you soon. <laughs>